Breaking news, the holy fire has now reached Riverside County. Sky 2 spotted a fire tornado swirling tonight. The fire has burned 3,400 acres and is just 5% contained. And tonight, many homeowners are trying to decide if they should leave. Yeah, they have packed up their things and are prepared to get out at a moment's notice as the fire closes in. And we begin our Fire Watch team coverage with CBS 2's Stacy Butler. She is live just south of Corona with the very latest. Stacy. Yeah, Pat and Jeff, you can see behind me, this fire has really laid down. It looks like just a few hot spots and a glow there on that other canyon. This is the very last canyon before a major development called Horse Thief Canyon. But you can see a lot of lights on in this neighborhood at this late hour. People living here, they don't know whether they should stay or go. We're having faith. Praying to stay safe. Tonight, those who live in the path of the holy fire are worried. This is so frightening. It, literally, when you look out our front door, it looks like it's coming straight for us. Gail Edgecombe is one of hundreds of residents who live in the quiet hillside community of Horse Thief Canyon in Corona. As firefighters keep watch over flames slowly crawling toward their community, locals gather tonight to find out if the voluntary evacuation order will change. Correct. That's when we so know it's mandatory. The holy fire has burned thousands of acres from Holy Jim Canyon to the canyons above Lake Elsinore. For now, homes are safe, but firefighters warned residents that an ember can cast up to a mile away and ignite another fire. If you folks have any type of combustible materials that are around your house, piles of wood, firewood, uh, anything that might be flammable, take the time right now to remove those from your houses. Locals under a voluntary evacuation order don't know whether to stay or go. Are you worried? Yeah, a little. Yeah got everything packed up and ready to go so it's been that we've been here 17 years and this is um, the second fire we've seen this has got to be the worst I didn't really think it was that big of a deal last night compared to kind of how I feel about it tonight I'm kind of nervous well I don't really know what to do my husband's kind of like we're not leaving and I'm just I don't know I don't know we should probably go get go get our stuff ready and to be clear, the evacuation order for this area is only voluntary at this point. And firefighters are crossing their fingers that it's going to stay that way. We're talking about lower temperatures tonight, and you can see out here there isn't any wind, and that's really working in their favor. Pat and Jeff? Thank you. We have more incredible images tonight of the Holy Fire. This one tells it all. LA Times photographer Alan Shabin posted this to Twitter. It shows a man fishing along the shores of Lake Elsinore, with the fire creeping just over the hillside. Extreme heat isn't helping those firefighters, of course. No, it isn't. CBS 2's Garth Camp is tracking the conditions for us tonight. Garth. Yeah, well, we're seeing light winds. That's the good news out there. Temperatures still very, very warm, though. Obviously, we had a couple of degree cool down in some spots today. 75 degrees right now downtown. Winds are calm in the humidity at 73%. So we're starting a little bit of cool down. We've actually released uh, from some of these um, heavy, uh, not winds, the wind advisories are gone, but the... Uh, uh, heat warnings, excuse me, there's so many of them going on. We're just stripping them down now. 88 out towards San Bernardino. There's a little change in the temperatures for you. 96 is where we head today, or where we made it to, but you can see this is why it's been confusing. We had a lot of watches and warnings. There's a red flag warnings. That continues for LA County Mountains, parts of the AV and the excessive heat warning still for the AV all the way out to the east. But everybody else, we've kind of cut loose, but it just skirts it out towards the south and towards the east as well. All right, I'll explain it all to you. Talk about a little bit of break for us, plus some humidity coming away in just a few minutes. Back to you guys. Let's go to some breaking news right now. A tentative settlement tonight in the massive Aliso Canyon methane leak. 100,000 tons of natural gas spewed from a SoCal gas well into Porto Ranch neighborhoods for months back in 2015. Now, thousands were evacuated. Many still complain today about health issues. A news conference to announce that settlement is scheduled for tomorrow. And more breaking news, this time in Oxnard, where a man was reportedly shot and killed in the middle of the street. Police say they responded to a call of possible gunfire on Camino del Sol at Rice Avenue around 7.30. They found one man down in the street. That section of Camino del Sol is closed to traffic while the police investigate. Class is back in session tomorrow for some local schools, but not for a group of teachers in Banning. These teachers sit there at home answering messages from parents like myself or any other parents who have questions to get and questions answered. They're sitting there working in grading papers and doing all kinds of stuff. So are you in their shoes to know? 
things getting heated tonight for a meeting for the teachers union and parents. The teachers announced a three day strike starting tomorrow, which is the first day of school. Well, they claim the district made their work days longer, but didn't compensate them. While parents sympathize with the situation, many wish the issue was resolved sooner. Why the first day of school? They should have done it earlier or toward the end. They should have resolved all their issues. So we're not too happy about it, but what are you going to do? Well, the district says students should attend the first day of class as substitute teachers will be used at all the Banning campuses during this strike. USC is under new leadership tonight. Embattled President CL Max Nikias officially stepped down today. CBS 2 Suzanne Marquez has reaction from students. A closing of one chapter and the start of the next. Interim USC President Wanda Austin speaking at this year's commencement for USC's engineering school. The USC alumna is a former president of the Aerospace Corporation and member of the USC board. I think it's really special that she's a woman, and I loved seeing that she's very involved in engineering, in STEM, in technology. Um, I think that's going to bring a really interesting dynamic. She replaces embattled former president Max Nikias, who is accused of ignoring and at worst hiding a series of scandals plaguing USC that recently had 200 USC professors call calling for him to step down. The most egregious, more than 200 women accuse former USC gynecologist George Tyndall of sexual misconduct. He worked at the Student Health Center for nearly 30 years. We've heard complaints about this president for a while now, and it's only our second, we're going into our second year of law school. So I think it's a good and positive change. He apparently has known about this incident and has put that aside. Um, so it's good that there's, you know, change happening on campus. Nikki has faced a series of scandals. Dean of the medical school, Herman Polifito, was accused of using drugs even in his USC office. His replacement, Mohat Varna, accused of sexually harassing a researcher. USC settled for $135,000. And last week, USC asked the U.S. Attorney's Office to open a criminal investigation into a $100,000 donation from L.A. County Supervisor Mark Ridley Thomas that helped his son get a professor job at USC. That money ended up in an account his son controlled. Board President Rick Russo says the search should take four to six months. He also said a broad cultural change needs to happen at USC, even on the board, which is very powerful, very wealthy. It's 59 members strong. It's been criticized for being too large and for allowing Max Nikias to have too much control. Well, not anymore. Reporting at USC, I'm Suzanne Marquez, CBS 2 News. Well, you could call it a wild ride today for California based Tesla. After a surprise announcement from none other than CEO Elon Musk. Yeah, that announcement said stocks soaring today. And CBS 2's <laughs> Crystal Cruz joins us now in the studio with what Musk had to say today in that tweet. Jeff and Pat, anytime Elon Musk tweets, everyone takes a big look. And he made an announcement that he might take the company uh, public, now private. Reaction on Wall Street, as you can imagine, was immediate. This was the tweet that sent a jolt through the stock market. Tesla CEO Elon Musk writing, am considering taking Tesla private at 420, meaning $420 a share, funding secured. Within minutes, Tesla stock shot up by nearly $25 a share. The rise so fast, trading was halted. When trading resumed 90 minutes later, the stock price accelerated again, ending the day at 387 a share. Tesla went public in 2010, so why go in reverse and take the electric car maker private again? One reason? Private companies don't have to publicly report their finances. Wall Street has been pressuring Tesla to make more and lose less. Just last week, Tesla announced a second quarter loss of $717 million. Musk blamed much of that on the cost of ramping up to mass produce the company's $35,000 Model 3. In a blog post today, Musk wrote, as a public company, we're subject to wild swings in our stock price. Being public also subjects us to the quarterly earnings cycle that puts enormous pressure on Tesla to make decisions that may be right for a given quarter, but not necessarily right for the long term. Tesla is currently valued at $64 billion. If Musk does take the company private and pay $420 a share, that would make it a $71 billion deal the largest buyout in U.S. history. Pat and Jeff, back to you. Okay, Crystal, thank you so much. Well, tonight was a national night out, and people and police gathering all across Southern California. One of those events in Silver Lake, a chance for the community to meet face-to-face -face with police officers and talk about battling crime together. 
Mayor Eric Garcetti and LAPD Chief Michael Moore were at tonight's event. It's just a reminder that these are our streets and that we shouldn't just do this one night a year. They should always be our streets. National Night Out. This is when America takes a moment to enjoy America. The National Night Out events held all over the Southland tonight. And listen to that LAPD officer saying Officer Chris Riza jumped in with the mariachis at National Night Out in Boyle Heights tonight. Oh, that sounds great. Well, a makeshift compound is raided and 11 children are rescued. Tonight, a gruesome discovery in the search for a missing child. And why are boulders strewn across this Los Angeles street? Well, some say it's an obvious ploy to try and move homeless out of the area. I'm Tom Waite with a live report coming up. Have the back to school shopping blues? You're not alone. Find out how much it'll cost you this year. Hi, everybody. I'm Garth Kemp. Well, we're done with some of the heat and some of the spots. I'll explain it all to you coming up. And the Brady Bunch house destined for a makeover. New owner and the new plans. And here's a look at the guest tonight on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert.